you meet people in life and they need help. And this morning, Mel Kuyper released his first five of his 1.0 draft. Now, what does that mean for the Detroit Lions? Well, in theory, it should mean nothing because Mel Kuyper is a goddamn idiot. I have who he, who he, ta- who he takes, Having by the way. said that, who he took is unbelievable. We'll start at number one, the Chicago Bears. Rightfully so. I do agree with this, by the way. I don't mind it. Jalen Carter, number one overall. There you go. Builds Does anybody have a problem with no. this? No, builds your defense around him. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, pick number two. Now shit hits the fan. <laughs> pick number two, the Houston Texans take C.J. Stroud. And it gets better. That's That's got to be based on physical tools, I think, I, I would assume. Bryce Young's size. Okay, but anyway, go on. C.J. Stroud goes I, two. Has to be. I, I can't. It's not based on. Arizona, Will Anderson Jr., I can respect okay. it, but whatever. Yeah. Pick number four. The Indianapolis Colts take Bryce Young. And then Will Levis goes five to Seattle, which leaves Tyrese Wilson, which leaves Miles Murphy, Brian Burris. You name them, they'll be available in this mock draft, which I find very interesting. And... and- the funny thing is, we were doing the show. We were going to come out with a different topic. We were going to start off with a different segment and kind of just get the get the Wednesday going. And then we look to our left, and Mel Kuyper's on the screen being a jackass, having Will Levis go before Bryce Young, or vice versa, whatever it was. C.J. Stroud going before Bryce yeah, Young. What are we the doing here? One. He was the first quarterback off the board. How? Why? Like I said, it's got to be... He's 6'3". He fits the mold. Like, the only knock on Bryce is his size. That's it. Like, if we're talking playing the quarterback position, he's better than C.J. Stroud. But um, it is what it is. It's Mel Kuyper's mock draft. It's funny because Mel Kuyper can be wrong so much. And, like, I remember Braylon's story about how he was, like, the seventh-ranked receiver on his big board back in the day. It's like the guy is – he's wrong so much, but people still go and look at his mock drafts. Yeah, I, I just – Mel Kuyper. I don't even care – look – Let's be real here, right? Not everybody nails the mock drafts. It's very difficult And he to actually, t- to his credit, he did a pretty good job last year. If you go back and look at his mock draft. So, he, I, I don't mind, but when we're going to have a conversation here about Detroit and where they sit at six, in his version, that's a disaster for Detroit. <clears throat> it's a disaster. Because Carter Anderson are off the board, right? And so are the three quarterbacks, which eliminates what, Jeff? The ability to trade back to a team that would want a quarterback. Yeah. So the idea that Indianapolis, Seattle, and Houston all take a quarterback, that that is problematic. I don't expect that to happen. I don't expect Seattle to take a quarterback. I actually expect them to take somebody on the defensive side of the ball. But beyond the point, Mel Kuyper's first mock draft, very bad for Detroit. Can I read off both the picks? Yeah, I have um, the sixth pick and the eighteenth pick, and what Mel Kiper does. Uh, the first one, and I've seen this on a couple other mock drafts as well. What, Tyree the, Wilson, edge out of Texas Tech. Can I ask you something and before then, you go to eighteen? Yes. Would you draft an edge rusher at six? I wouldn't have an issue with it. Would you? I'm not asking if you'd have an issue. Yes. I, See, the, I I would pass because it, of Houston. Kaminsky, Hutchinson. But what if the best player available is an edge rusher? By would a you sacrifice a, a, a like? Well, you would know you go a little I'm less, at, to, but I can't work with it because it's not real yet. I would love to trade back. Yeah. If there's a quarterback, I out agree. There, I mean, somebody wants him. I don't even need a a haul. I'll trade back two, three spots. I'll get my corner at eight, nine, ten. I'll move on with my. But body. let's say you're stuck at six. You're stuck at six. Are you going I, I, best player available, or are you picking positional? Like you, you're going to take the best corner. Depends who best player available is, right? Because I, I have my, I have my foundational rules when it comes to the draft, which we'll start with the mock drafts coming on later. But tell me who he has at eighteen. So Go for eighteen, it. and this actually, I, I don't mind this one. Christian Gonzalez, corner out of Oregon. Okay, look. Depends now who was on the not, board. I got to see who was on the board. I'm not going to say it's shit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. I would prefer Devon, uh, excuse me, Devon Witherspoon and Joey Porter Jr. over Christian Gonzalez. Gonzalez, to me, is a Pac-12 corner 
that's not polished, has the size though, has the intangibles, has the the likability of a guy you'd like to draft and take a chance on. Right. Uh, I'm going with Joey Porter Jr. in that spot. But and if Devon Witherspoon's available, I'm going I'm going in that direction. Yeah. You don't know if Porter was. I, I would love to see the entire mock draft. It just shows the Lions pick. This is um, yeah. We don't. By the way, this is so. um, SI.com. So this is John Macaroon, our good friend of the show. He put he put this article out there. But oh, this so is he just, released uh, for everyone who doesn't have ESPN Plus. He released <laughs> my man, <laughs> my, my man. man. <laughs> but they didn't. I wish they would have showed the entire thing because I I could have seen where Porter or Witherspoon. Because I'm with you. You guys well. are very so. Look. It's early. It's January. All right. I don't mind some of you saying Gonzalez will be long gone. Right? We don't know yet. We'll see how the board shapes out. We'll see the combine. We'll see how everybody does. When they practice in their underwear, everyone's going to get a boner. All right? Cool. <laughs> Having said that, uh, I, I don't think from now you can predict the board for any of these corners. You've seen people have Witherspoon as high as six. As low as 15, 16. But they got it. They got but you test. Don't, I, I understand, but you don't they know, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and speculate on who will be available. All I know is, based on Mel Kuypers, I'm just going to talk about his. I think that's a bad mock for, for the Lions <laughs> yeah. because you eliminate the idea of trading back. Now, do you like Miles Murphy? Do you love him? Do you like Brian Burris? Do you want to take your corner at six? I don't know. You guys all have your preferences. I'm not releasing my mock draft for another week, two weeks. So I'm chilling. Not spoiling anything yet. Having said that, very interesting. Very interesting. And again, positional needs or BPA? What would you do? You asked me this question. I'll, I'll ask you it right back. What would Jeff I afraid to do? At six? And we're going to play that game, by the way, at 930. But you'll, fi you'll figure out what that is <laughs> on your own. If I'm at six and I can't trade back, if I don't feel comfortable taking some of these corners at six, unless Brad Holmes feels like they can develop into a top-tier corner, I'm taking the best player available. And that's probably going to be a defensive tackle, Brian Bercy or a Tyree Wilson, whoever that is. I don't mind that. And, and where you're at right now is the Lions. I like Houston. But still, at the same time, like it, it, if you could take somebody that can play edge, can get moved inside and play defensive tackle, I'm, I'm going with that player. So um, I don't mind the BPA approach. I don't. Uh, Double D asks: Is there anything wrong with Akuda putting in a bit, uh, putting on, excuse me, putting on a little bit of weight, and using him as a hybrid linebacker type? Uh, I'll tell you the problem: he would never do it. Good tackler, very good tackler. Couldn't cover my mother on a one-on-one -on -one route. Having said that, well, that's why you have to draft a corner, Jeff. Right? Ah. Uh. So I have to draft a corner. That is why we're looking at corners. So yes. Chief says cornerback at six is stupid. And you guys all know how I feel about secondary players at the top of the board. Right. right? Picks one, two, three, even four, I find unacceptable. Having said that, Sauce Gardner, the exception, he's worked out all pro rookie year. He is exactly what you wanted Akuda to be when you took him number three overall. Fair? Cool. Number six, I can justify a corner. I, at least I believe so. And you guys know how against it I am. But I truly believe I can justify a corner at six. Why? What am I looking for? I'm looking for Patrick Sertan. I'm looking for, look, Jalen Ramsey, I want to say was fifth overall. But you're still looking for an exceptional corner. I just don't break my foundational rules at one, two, and three. Hell, even four. And yeah, you say, well, what's a two-pick difference? It's a big difference. Financially, it's a big difference. And your impact on the board, it's a big difference. Right. Because if you're picking in the top three, top four, Jeff, you probably need a quarterback, probably need an edge rusher mm -hmm. before you even need to consider a corner. It's just how it works. So positional value is a big thing for me. Uh, I think what Mel Kuyper has presented us this morning is a disaster. <laughs> in terms of what the Lions can do flexibility-wise, they can't trade back in this scenario. They can't. Someone's going to trade up for Miles Murphy or Brian Burris. Right. Does it make sense to me? And if you're it, you're in a tough position, number one, the corners, that, that's why we have these conversations about what corners we prefer. you got to see them go out and test at the combine. That's going to be a big part of it. I mean, you saw Sauce last year run a, run a 440. Um, and, and that obviously boosted his draft stock even more than it already he was already pro projected. 
But moving forward with the Lions, you're in an interesting position because if you can't trade back and you're sitting there at six and you don't pick till 18, if you pass on a corner, the question is, do you feel like at 18 you will get a similar quality player? And you could argue you wouldn't. So that's why I would that's have a That's a very problem good argument. I would agree. Taking a corner and, at six. But again, I can justify six because I can justify yeah. Sertan at eight or nine. Right. Right, depending on the player. Right. Uh, having said that, best linebacker versus best corner available at six, who would you take? Mm, well, best corner. If you could get the best corner or the best linebacker in this draft, who would you prefer? Best corner. I, I'm not talking about a player. Best corner. See? Yeah. See I didn't think I mean? about it for a second, but yeah, best corner. <laughs> For the Lions, it makes so much sense. Yeah. It just does. 